f of x equals to x times square root of x plus 3. Let's find the relative maximum and minimum of this function. Another word for the relative is local, local max, local min. For, so we will follow this procedure. Before we start finding the f prime, I would like to point out the domain of this function because the domain affects the test interval. All right, so what's the domain? Remember this, the square root of negative is undefined, right? The square root of negative 4 is undefined. You can use your calculator to check it out. So domain of f, so domain of f, what is that? So we have to point out that x plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0. So x must be greater than or equal to negative 3 because the square root of negative is undefined. That's why we have to make sure that x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so what else do we need, need to know? I think, I think that's it. So the next step is we would like to go ahead to find the f prime. All right, so we have f of x equals to x times a square root term. So as a result, we have to use product rule. So product rule, remember this. If you don't, let me remind you. So that is fg prime plus gf prime. So that's the product rule thing later. So f prime of x that is equals to fg prime. So the derivative of the square root term, you bring the square root down, whatever inside the square root raised to the one half minus one. So that is negative one half. So the radicand is x plus three. And then we have to multiply the derivative of the radicand that is equals to one. So this is by the chain rule, right? And then plus, g f prime, so g f prime, so g is the square root of x plus 3, and then f prime, the derivative of x is equals to 1. So for uh, a few more words for the chain rule, the square root of x plus 3 is a composition function. We have a linear function x plus 3 inside a square root function. So that's why you have to use the chain rule to take the derivative of the radicand. Okay, f prime of x, that is equals to um, we have x divided by 2 times square root of x plus 3 and then plus the square root of x plus 3 that is equals to 0. Actually, I should say you have to set that equals to 0 because set that equals to 0 means we are looking for a horizontal asymptote. That is where the critical number occurs. So other than that, so we have a critical number on the horizontal asymptote, a sharp point, which is the function where the function is not differentiable and vertical tangent line. All right. And then uh, this Let's do a common denominator. So for a common denominator, we have x divided by 2 times square root of x plus 3. And then for the square root of x plus 3, I would like to do this. I would like to multiply the top and bottom by 2 root x plus 3 and then 2 root x plus 3. Okay, so back to orange, we have to set that equals to zero. And then what's next? So the next step is we have a long fraction bar, 2 root x plus 3. And then this is the x plus 2 times x plus 3, right? Square root times square root. The, and so the square root sign is gone. And then we have that equals to 0. So we have top divided by bottom equals to 0. Let me remind you this. So let's say you have a divided by b equals to 0. So two things that we know length is b cannot be equal to 0 and a has to be equal to 0. A number divided by a number equals to 0. The, the divisor cannot be equal to 0. So for example, you cannot take a 3 divided by 0, right? So the bottom cannot be equal to 0. As a result, the top has to be equal to 0. So we have a 0 divided by a non-zero number. The quotient must be equal to 0. So that means put that in this problem, we have uh, the top equals to 0, which is x plus 2x plus 6 equals to 0. So we have a 3x plus 6 equals to 0. So x is equals to negative 2, right? So x equals to negative 2. Uh, what is this? This is my critical number or critical value. Critical number or critical value. And then the next step is we will have to build our test interval. So to build our test interval, we draw a num number line like this. And then we have to use the domain. So the domain is x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3, right? So I put a negative 3 in, the, in here and then I 
for to express the greater than I will just block the less than so block that me block out the less than means I don't need anything less than negative 3 and then negative 2 is right over here oh by by, by the way uh, what if the critical number is not negative 2 what if the critical number is negative 5 or negative 10 then is that still a critical number uh, you can still call that a critical number but you do not put that critical number on this number line because anything less than negative 3 we don't need that anymore so if you have listen to me if you have anything less than negative 3 then they don't appear on this number line all right so if you have x equals to negative 5 as a critical number you can still call that a critical number but that doesn't belong to the, the, the number line because negative 5 or negative 10 they are less than negative 3 i don't want to see any number less than negative 3 on the on the number line all right so if you have a ne negative 5 then you have one test test interval which is from negative 3 all the way to positive infinity so i have to let you this let you know this because this happens all the time so we have negative 3 to negative 2 why do i put a negative 3 and then from negative 2 to positive infinity so this is my test intervals and then the next step is we will have to move on to the sign chart so for the sign chart uh what color should i use let's let's use this pink Okay, so first we have our test in intervals. So we have two, right? So the first one is from negative three to negative two, and then the next one is from negative two to positive infinity. And then we have our test value. Pick a number inside each interval, so this one uh, pick something easy. So how about this negative uh, 2.5 and then this one I will just pick x equals to 0. Don't, don't pick a big number to torture the plugin, all right? Just just do. And then you test f prime of x. So f prime of x. So you have to tell me what f prime of negative 2.5 equals to and what f prime of 0 equals to. Right, so for f prime of zero, where is where is your f prime? So your f prime is uh right right over here, right? So that is where the f prime is. All right. So if you plug in a zero, so if you plug in a zero, so f prime of zero, so you have zero divided by two, and then zero plus three, so the whole thing is zero plus zero plus three so that is equals to root three you don't you don't need to approximate that because all i need is to know that it's greater than zero so if you plug in f of neg f prime of negative 2.5 uh this one gives you approximately negative 1.061 i don't care if that is 61 62 or 63 as long as that is i only care that that is a negative positive or negative that's that's what what we care I don't care what that equals to. I need to know if that is a positive or negative. All right, so this is a negative, and then this is a positive. What is negative mean? Negative means f prime is a slope, right? Negative slope is what? What is that? That is a downhill. So going down, decreasing, and then positive means going uphill, increasing. What do you get when you go down? and then horizontal tangent and then up you get a what you get a local or relative minimum at x equals to negative two all right so there is a minimum at x equals to negative two and then this table we call this a sign chart and then can you tell me the location of this minimum so that, that which is f of negative two right so let's change change to another color to give you a better contrast so when x is equals to negative 2, what do we have? We have plug it into the original function, negative 2 and then negative 2 plus 3. So y is equals to negative 2. So the point negative 2 comma negative 2 is your relative minimum, or you can call this a local minimum. All right, so this is the minimum. So let me give you a picture to support my answer. I already prepared my pictures down here. So I, I prepared to you, I will explain the one on the right in, in a minute. So this is uh let's let's match the color. So this is f of x equals to x times square root of x plus three. So that looks like a Nike sign. So this one I use decimals to 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 get this graph. 
decimals. So we have a, a like key sign, and then at point negative two comma negative two, there is a local or relative minimum. That's it. And also at this point, we have a horizontal tangent, right? Let's don't put this in there. So we have a minimum. And then uh, the graph on the right here is what I want you to do. I'm not going to show that uh, in this video. So if you change the function a little bit to f of x equals to x times the square root of x minus 3, then this is what you are going to get. So in this function, there is no minimum and there is no maximum. You can try this really quickly by yourself because the function is increasing the whole time. It's an increasing function. Uh, what's the domain? The domain is from 3 to past the infinity, right? From 3 to past the infinity. In it's increasing the whole time. It's not turning at all, so there is no minimum and there is no local minimum, no local maximum. All right, you can try this yourself. Okay, that is the end of this video. If my, you think my instruction is clear and helpful, give me a like. Feel free to share this video in any social media. And if you are new to the channel, take two seconds to click the subscribe button down below. I appreciate that. I will see you all in the next lesson. Signing out.